what we're doing is working here in Oklahoma. Tonight, we are digging into how agencies are working to combat illegal marijuana grows in Oklahoma. OBN and OMMA released new data today showing their progress removing organized crime from Oklahoma's medical marijuana program. As Fox 25's Katie Arata reports, they have shut down well over a thousand grow operations in just the past two years. At the peak of Oklahoma's medical marijuana, uh, program we had at the Bureau of Narcotics 9400 active registrations for growers in the state of Oklahoma. Um, as of October 31st, November 1st, that number had dropped to 3,200. OBN says several of the illegal operations were using Oklahoma as a base of operations for black market drug trafficking. Many of which were straw owners facilitating uh, fraudulent paperwork to get licensed in Oklahoma and also the black market growers that were using those licenses to facilitate their black market drug trafficking all over the United States. Many of the marijuana farms were linked to transnational criminal groups from Mexico, China, Armenia, Russia, and other countries. It has become a, a huge issue in reference to national security because you have communistic and terroristic countries that are here in Oklahoma and they're they're moving this product on the black market and sending and laundering money millions and billions of dollars back to these countries. The transnational criminal groups in Oklahoma have caused an increase in countless crimes in the state, according to OBN, and not just drug related crimes. We have seen a huge uptick in, in every crime that's imaginable that is directly related to this, these organizations, these criminal organizations. To combat them, OBN created marijuana enforcement teams who strategically target the illegal operations alongside OMMA's compliance department, who investigate claims of illicit activity within the licensed market. The word has gotten out around the country that Oklahoma now has some of the most efficient, effective regulatory and enforcement practices in the country. Collectively, over the last two years, they have seized over 700,000 pounds of marijuana destined for the black market. But OBN says they still have a long way to go. We're nowhere near where I think we need to be. If you look at states around us, like Arkansas, um, we still have way too many growths, way too many. Reporting for Fox 25 News, I'm Katie Arata. OBN says they currently have several hundred ongoing investigations into the medical marijuana industry. OBN officials also showed video of an ongoing marijuana operation at today's press conference. The video you see here is from this morning when agents served a search warrant in Grove. Officials say this is just one example of the type of operation they're working on every single day. Now, as of this morning, the suspects in this case had not yet been arrested. Attorney General Gettner Drummond created an organized crime task force back in September to combat illegal grow operations across Oklahoma. A citizen tip line was also added for people to report suspicious activity related to unlicensed operations. The task force works closely with the OBN, OMMA and other state agencies to investigate all crimes related to illegal grow operations, including human trafficking and the distribution of deadly drugs like fentanyl. Now we got an update on that task force just two weeks ago after two big drug busts in Lincoln and Wagoner counties. The AG's office says 74,000 pounds of illegal marijuana was seized in Wagoner County. The Wagoner County Sheriff's Office was contacted by the AG's new task force about a property, and when they served a search warrant, they seized so much marijuana they had to get help hauling it out. We all worked together. Uh, they brought out equipment, two dump trucks, a semi-in-dump trailer, and we started pulling them up there and using uh, loaders and excavators. And we started that probably about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and we moved that dope to where it was going to be uh, uh, retained uh, till about 5 o'clock in the morning. Sheriff Elliott says in his 35 years of law enforcement, he has never seen that amount of marijuana in one location. According to the Attorney General's office, street value for this marijuana is roughly $75 million. We also spoke with A.G. Drummond to learn more about his new task force. We are successful, have successfully since May shut down one illegal grow a day, and we will continue to do that. Yesterday was two. We had Wagner County and Lincoln County. The data that I have access to illustrates that Oklahoma grown marijuana populates about 60% of the marijuana consumed in New York City, about 40% of that consumed in New Jersey. We are the number one producer and distributor of illegal marijuana in the United States. 
250 pounds of illegal marijuana were seized in the Lincoln County bust. Just days later, the task force made another big bust. On November 16th, more than 77,000 illegal marijuana plants were seized at six medical grow operations near Prague. 2,000 pounds of marijuana and several firearms were also discovered. Oklahoma voters decided against legalizing recreational marijuana earlier this year. Now, the measure would have legalized weed for those over the age of 21. All 77 counties voted against it. Representative Scott Fetgatter told us those results were less about public view on weed and more about the repercussions of state enforcement or lack thereof. I don't think that Oklahomans necessarily were taking a shot at marijuana. On, on that legislation. They were taking a shot at crazy wild, wild west, illegal, black market, unregulated marijuana that has been going on. Experts say there were two main reasons Oklahoma became the wild west of marijuana after medical marijuana was legalized. The rules were lax and the land was cheap. In 2021, the New York Times reported it only took $2,500 to start a marijuana farm compared to nearly 100,000 across state lines in Arkansas. Now at the time, Oklahoma also did not have a cap on how many dispensaries could sell marijuana, the number of cannabis farms, or how much each farm could produce. A handful of new laws are regulating the marijuana industry. They've all taken effect this year. A moratorium began August 26th for new dispensary grower and processor licenses. The end date is set for August 1st, 2026, unless a women may's executive director determines all pending licensing reviews, inspections or investigations are complete. Now the moratorium does not affect current licensees who can apply for renewal. Fees and renewals are also now more expensive. Senate Bill 913 took effect on April 20th. It requires medical marijuana grower license applicants to submit a bond along with their application if they've not owned the land for at least five years. The minimum bond amount is set at $50,000 and can be used to restore the property if it's abandoned or if the operation loses its license. Businesses are required to submit their renewal application within 60 days of the license expiring. And if a business submits the application late, they will have to pay a $500 fee. Licenses are permanently expired if a renewal application is not submitted within 90 days of the expiration date. Tonight we're hearing from legal marijuana businesses who say they're being impacted by the state's crackdown on illegal grows. Fox 25's David Chazanoff joining us live from Edmond after speaking with some dispensary owners. So David, tell us what did you find out? Wendy, we heard from two dispensaries here in Edmond, one being a place called Get Baked. Their marketing manager tells me new regulations have changed the way his business operates. From a small business standpoint, I can see it being very, very challenging because it's always evolving. It's always moving. Richard King says new OMMA regulations have changed how his business handles their packaging. With the new laws, how they came, you need to not be able to see the product, whether it be a concentrate, edible, vape, or anything like that. The dispensary also follows strict signage guidelines. Not being able to display medicinal benefits, not saying that it has, it does this, but it does have benefits. So not being able to display the positives of cannabis that has impacted. Just down the road, likewise cannabis owner Corbin Wyatt says updated rules might cost him hundreds of thousands of dollars. We've recently purchased a new grow operation and with some of the changes they've made to transferring ownership, uh, they may require that we shut down that business. And that was not the case when we purchased the business. It's a challenge that changes his business approach. We're always uh, treading lightly and making sure that we're paying very close attention to what's going on. Staying vigilant has helped both dispensaries during an unsettling time in the industry. We're always doing our best to find direction, even when direction isn't necessarily uh, as open as we need it to be. There's a few challenges, but it's nothing that we haven't been able to overcome. King says he heard other dispensaries have been charged with fines that have taken them out of business. Reporting live in Edmond, David Chazanoff, Fox 25 News. All right, David, thank you. OBN officials claim the crackdown on illegal grows is helping the marijuana industry. Mark Woodward tells us he's heard positive feedback from business owners. So the industry itself is saying thank you very much for what you're doing because it has made it very, very difficult on the legitimate people uh, to succeed in Oklahoma 
when they've had to compete uh, for you know four and a half, five years with some of these criminal elements. And that was your big story breakdown tonight. You can learn more about the state's crackdown on illegal marijuana grows on OKCFox.com. And if you missed any part of this big story breakdown, you can find it all on our YouTube channel. Just scan the QR code on your screen or search OKCFox.